Hi, and welcome to Northwest Brew Talk. I'm Mike Rizzo. And I'm Michelle Rizzo. This is a big episode number 20. Each week we promote the Washington brewing industry by talking to those people involved in drinking Washington beer. With over 200 breweries in the state, we try to highlight as many as possible every episode. On today's show, we're going to have an interview with Todd from Hilliard Beer, our brew news and views, and local music from Glaciers on the Moon. If you have any comments or questions, send us an email to nwbrewtalk at gmail.com. We are on Twitter at nwbrewtalk and on Facebook at facebook.com slash nwbrewtalk. If you like the show and want to support us, why not become a patron? With a donation, we offer everything from a mention on the show to a copy of our upcoming book, Washington Beer. Head over to nwbrewtalk.podbean.com for more details. To start the show, let's open a beer. And that is how we do this. This is P51 Porter from Wingman Brewers. It has 8% ABV. Wingman Brewers is located in Tacoma and opened in April of 2011. They have pints and growler fills available at their tap room, open Thursday through Sunday. Part of every sale they make goes to a Tacoma charity, so supporting them means supporting a local business, of course, and supporting some local charities. All right. That's, uh, I like that uh, that they do that. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That, that's a nice thing. This has good... Um, Porter smell to it. As soon as you smell it, you know it smells oh, like absolutely. a porter. Oh, absolutely. Yum. But uh, actually, it has a, a good flavor. I'm not a porter drinker. I don't like dark beers much, but uh, this is not bad at all. That's good. From the Wingman Brewers website, P51 is a robust and clean finishing porter. Rich, malty flavors highlight hints of chocolate and coffee. At 8% ABV, this dark beer will warm even the coldest Puget Sound nights. I'm kind of hoping some, for some cold nights coming up. I don't think so. I'm okay with the heat. <laughs> But uh, that's pretty good. And now, on to our blue news and views. The Washington Brewers Festival is less than two weeks away, and this year will be the biggest event ever. The latest numbers are 105 breweries and almost 500 different beers. The event starts Friday, June 19th, which is 21 and over only. But since this is Father's Day weekend, Saturday and Sunday are all ages. Held at Marymore Park in Redmond, this is the festival to attend this year, and we'll be there too. We already have interviews lined up with some of the state's legends and up-and-coming brewing stars. Visit WashingtonBeer.com for all the details. Now here's a couple interesting beer-related stories. If you're any kind of Seahawks fan, you know the Patriots beat them in the Super Bowl. That was a controversy, or there was a controversy, surrounding deflated balls, and after an investigation, Patriots quarterback Tom Brady was implicated. In other words, he likes soft balls. In New England, they think Brady has been railroaded. So a Norfolk, Massachusetts saloon debuted the Free Brady Blonde IPA. For each beer sold, the saloon is donating a dollar to a local charity. It's not clear which ones, but hopefully Brady learned his lesson. Now in Spain, a professor of inorganic chemistry has developed an electronic ton that accurately distinguished between four styles of beer 100% of the time. It's pretty impressive. The electronic ton could predict the ABV 86% of the time. Professor Maria Luis Rodriguez Mendez said humans are still better, but these ten, uh, tons could help in breweries on weekends or at night. Much like we le- uh, not much like we learn to dis- distinguish between different flavors, different foods, they taught the computer the same thing. We're one more step closer to robots taking over the world. Entering beer competitions is important for some breweries as it shows the world you brew great beer when you meddle. The North American Brewers Association released the winners of this year's competition held annually in Idaho Falls, Idaho. Washington did well, and Bellingham, for the number of breweries located there, came out on top. Chuckanut Brewery took home three golds and silver. Boundary Bay took home a bronze, silver, and gold, and Wander and Aslan each took home one medal, Wander a silver, and Aslan a gold. 
Other Washington breweries did well, too. Paradise Creek Brewery in Pullman took home two golds and a silver. Old Schoolhouse in Winthrop took home a gold and silver. Icicle Brewing took home a gold and silver. Ice Harbor won a silver. Rubens Brews won a silver. And Ram Tacoma took home a bronze. Sound Brewing took home a gold and bronze. Ten Pin Brewing won a gold and bronze. And Valhall Brewing won a bronze. In all, Washington Breweries won 25 medals. We want to congratulate all the winners as Washington continues to prove we have some great brewers. Thanks to Washington Beer Blog for the story. Okay, that is great news. And uh, Bellingham kicking some butt. With consumers and brewers seeking new tastes, Great Western Malting in Pocatello, Idaho, is spending $75 million to double production capacity. Great Western's parent company, Grain Corp Limited, from Australia, said with the craft beer segment growing 22% in the last year and using more malting barley than mega brands, the expansion is needed. They expect to be uh, starting by this fall and completed in 2017. A recent report by Morgan Stanley in Huffington Post said that 24% of all consumers plan to decrease their beer consumption in the next year. Millennials especially are less interested in mega beer and more interested in spirits and wine. Anheuser-Busch has taken to launch social media campaigns to convince millennials that their beer doesn't suck. Craft beer is the way, according to the survey, so take that to mean more craft brewery purchases in the future. And that... Here's our brew news and views this week. Welcome back to Northwest Brew Talk. If you want to submit news to Northwest Brew Talk, send us an email to nwbrewtalk at gmail.com. If you've not yet subscribed to our podcast, why not do it now? It's free, available anywhere you listen to podcasts, including iTunes, Podbean, and Stitcher. If you like us, a review and rating would be really appreciated. But make sure to tell your friends about Northwest Brew Talk. Now, let's talk to Todd Garrett from the Hilliard's Beer. All right, we're here with uh, Todd Garrett from the Hilliard's Beer. How you doing? Good, good. Awesome. So, uh, you are the head brewer here. Yep, I, I am. I've been the head brewer since we opened uh, about three and a half years ago now. So okay. October 2011 was our opening date. Okay, cool. And uh, we just started to talk about it. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of breweries end with brewery or brewing, and, and <laughs> you guys are just beer. So Yeah, we uh, Hilliard's Beer. So this is, this is our beer. Uh, this is, we thought it would, it would be better to, to describe, you know, what we do, which is, is the beer. Okay, cool. So, what uh, what type of experience did you have before uh, getting involved with these guys? Uh, mostly home brewing, um, honestly. I I went to school for architecture. I got my architecture degree and and uh, practiced architecture here in Seattle for about seven years, and then um, met these guys through um, through people that I know at the architecture firm that I worked at. Mm-hmm. And uh, basically, just kind of kept showing up and helping them, um, helping them build the brewery out. And eventually, I, I think they decided they had to start paying me because I wouldn't go away. <laughs> so, uh, and then uh, I learned actually on the big system from Ryan Hilliard. Um, he taught me how to brew on the on the larger scale system, and um, it, it just really took off from there. Cool. So, uh, 2011. You guys uh, you seem to be everywhere already, and I know you you were showing us some stuff. You said that uh, you ship where to Sweden? Yeah, yeah. We're um, this is a, a new thing for us. We're exporting our beer uh, overseas. Uh, we have a huge contract that we won in Sweden. It's called uh, it's a tender offer that we won for System Bolaget, and it's a state-run liquor store essentially. Mm. So uh, at the moment, we're sending two shipping containers a month overseas um and that's just one one of our beers our amber ale really? uh so it's on the shelves over there um we've had some really good feedback from people in sweden uh, we've been over there a couple times to kind of meet people and say hi and nice. um yeah it's been it's it's been a, a real a real cool situation um and then um yeah so uh it's 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 just been fun. We have a really good partner over in Sweden too. Our our 
partner distributor is Spendrips over there. So, yeah, they've helped us do a lot of cool things. Nice. And uh, you guys seem to somehow have gotten your uh, your beer. Well, you can, which is a big deal. Yeah. And you, yeah. you seem to be in, like, stores everywhere. Totally. We, yeah, we... Um, so this this was actually... Uh, so Ryan and Adam, the two co-founders, they this was their brainchild for more than two years before we even opened. Um, and honestly, we uh, th- what they had talked about and what got me so excited about coming and working for them and helping them out was uh, their uh, because it is Hilliard's beer. It is all about the beer. We figured cans were the best package for the beer um, because of the benefits of uh, you know keeping the beer longer, stable longer, uh, over a longer period of time. Um, so uh, we opened canning, so we had cans when we opened from day one. Um, we were actually the first in the Pacific Northwest to have an automated canning line. Oh, really? uh, there was a couple breweries, like two beers, that were canning their beer, but um, we ponied up the dough up front and got the, the automated line, um, and it works really well for us. Um, and then as far as seeing our beer in stores, um, this was another part of their business plan where we really thought about what the beer scene was. And at the time, um, the two largest uh, breweries in Washington State were Manny's and Mac and Jack's, and those were draft-only breweries. Um, so after crunching some numbers and doing some, some research on some data about who buys beer, where they buy it, we actually found that, you know, over 70% of people bought beer to take home instead of going out to a bar. And so that, coupled with the, the idea that maybe we, we shouldn't be draft forward um, but more package forward, um, I think is one of the reasons that people see us in the grocery stores. It's because we, we made that a focus in the beginning. Right. So we actually really didn't have very many kegs in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we were doing mostly all cans. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, three and a half years in now, mm-hmm. we've been able to uh, purchase some more kegs and mm-hmm. build our draft fleet up. So right. the focus for this year has been kind of accelerating the draft program and getting out there on bars and restaurants right. and stuff. So. So you've done kind of the opposite of what almost everyone else does. Yeah, yeah. We had a different approach to it. Um, And it got you out there. It did. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, it worked. And at the time, you know, cans were still kind of Mm -hmm. uh, an emerging thing in the craft market. And it seems funny to say that. It was only three years ago. Yeah. And it's still kind of, you still have those people. Yes, totally. They think of... There's a little bit of a stigma to it. Right. But... um, uh, and now, you know, now there's like people that are mobile canning. They'll, mm-hmm. they'll show up to your brewery with a truck, mm-hmm. unload a canning line, and can all your beer for you. Yeah. So the market has totally changed, right. and uh, and um, I don't know. I'd like to think that we had something to do with it, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that would be good. Um, so what size system are you brewing on? Uh, we have a 15-barrel system. So... Um, we we actually make a lot, quite a bit of beer on that system. Mm-hmm. We're mostly considered, I would say, a production brewery. Right. Um, but the brew house we have right now is pulled out of a, an old brew pub in Sacramento. Oh. So it's meant for kind of like small batch brewing. Mm-hmm. Um, we've kind of Frankensteined it. We've done some some rigs to it, and uh, right now we're doing three brews a day, which wow. which for us is pretty major. Mm-hmm. Um, First guy starts at 5 a.m., uh, and the last guy gets out of here around 11. So, wow. um, Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of hard work, but I think um, we can see the horizon, and um, we all really love what we do. So, That's cool. Yeah. yeah that's good. And, and, and it seems like everybody we've met, too, most of the people that are, that are involved in this are in it because they want to. Oh, yeah. yeah so it is, everybody really seems to be in it. Yeah. You know? Uh, we haven't come across anybody who's like, oh, this is like the worst thing. <laughs> it's usually people coming from a different different job that are yeah that had that feeling before. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That was the feeling that got me out of my previous yeah. life. So exactly. Um, but yeah, it's and it is pretty cool actually. You know, in Ballard here, we've got I think twelve different breweries yeah. in, in less than a two mile radius, and yeah, that's crazy. Um, 
and it's a little community, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, whether or not we're competitors, um, maybe. I think we're all kind of doing our own things, and mm-hmm. uh, we all have our own take on the beer thing and, and our own niche, I guess. Mm-hmm. But um, for the most part, uh, we're all civil and, and friendly, and, and also, you know, we bail each other out sometimes. You yeah, know? That's cool. Like, yeah. I've had to borrow hops from people at um rubens and i've had to borrow stuff from people at northwest peaks and so and we always return the favor so it's yeah. just cool yeah yeah being close with that whole community yeah gotta be pretty cool yeah um so let's see so you're brewing three times a day you know how many how many barrels you're doing uh i i don't know what we're projected to do this year but last year we did 3600 barrels oh, okay um yeah which was pretty good i think we're going to be seeing some growth mostly because of the sweden deal this mm-hmm. year yeah, um, definitely. and uh just the way we changed up our packaging and and we launched a new ipa so so to go along with that you guys do like the tall boys yeah first. so what what was the reason for that instead of doing like um typical 12 the 12 course, ounces the 12, yeah. um well we really wanted to give people uh an honest pint of beer okay really and uh Again, from all the research that we did, the the four pack of sixteen ounce cans was really the most economical from a mm-hmm. consumer's perspective. Right, it, you get the most bang for your buck. But um, yeah, I don't know. That's what we do now. I'm, I'm you know I'm not saying that we're always going to be sure. doing that, but we'd like to get into maybe some specialty bottles, some seven fifty mm-hmm. milliliter bottles with a cork and wire cage. Oh yeah, cool. To do some of our barrels that mm-hmm. I was showing you earlier, nice. um, barrel launches and stuff like that. So so you, let's see, we were looking at the facility, you guys have more than doubled the space. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is a recent thing. Um, I think I told you back in October we mm-hmm. got the space. Um, uh, we've, you know, we've got some pretty big plans for it. Right mm-hmm. now uh, it's all about, you know, being able to afford all your big ideas. Sure. But um, right now it's good. Um, actually, there was a huge port slowdown here mm-hmm. on the West Coast, right. and this just so happened to coincide with the first month we were sending our mm-hmm. beer to Sweden. Nice. And uh, so if we hadn't had that other side, we had we had upwards of four shipping containers worth of beer packaged in cans and mm. one-way kegs ready to go, um, just waiting for the truck to show up. And if we hadn't had that other side, we there's I don't think we would have been able to do any of it, no, no. Uh, store it or or anything else. So um, it's been it's been a lifesaver so far. Um, the trick is to then uh, sell enough beer to afford the, the rest of the space. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're working on that. And uh, so you know, grand scheme, probably move a lot of the production. As far as the noisy stuff like the canning line and the kegging line, the keg washer, that kind of stuff, over to the other side so that we can keep the tasting room open Mm -hmm. more often and, um, you know, do fun things like like the party that's out here now and um, just introduce people to the beer that we make. Right. So, um, do you guys have any style? Is there a signature beer? Um, it's really hard actually to, so, you know, cause people always try to kind of classify you or categorize mm-hmm. you. Um, I don't know that we have a certain style. Uh, I guess overall, maybe our beers are a little more dry. we like a drier beer, more crisp. Um, we, we don't do these huge hot bombs that are very mm-hmm. prevalent in Washington state. So... I guess maybe that could be our considered our style. Um, it took us three years to make an actual IPA, oh, okay. which um, people thought we were crazy. Mm-hmm. But we <laughs> we really did want to show people that there's other beers out there besides mm-hmm. IPAs, right. and that we could make them, and we were dang good at it. Mm-hmm. Um, probably our flagship beer is our saison that we do. It's a Belgian farmhouse ale in a tall boy can, mm. and um, Still our number one seller, yeah, and it blows my mind. Uh, that, but that was the beer that kind of made us want to start the brewery because okay. we would buy, you know, Saison Dupont and seven hundred fifty milliliter bottles, and 
once you open it, you you're done. You you got to drink all of it, and then mm -hmm. it's two and a half beers maybe, um, and it's way too much money for what we thought. And so we thought, you know, um, somebody could do something like that locally and and be all right. Yeah, cool. Yeah, but we've got. I think the cool thing about what we've got in our tasting room and and available to the public is is basically the variety. Right. Um, we've got. On all of our eight different taps, we have a different beer, a different style of beer. Um, we don't have, you know, two pale ales and four IPAs and stuff like that. It's There's a Rauk beer, for, uh, you know, a German smoked lager or uh, uh, some of our barrel-aged stuff and mm -hmm. all different kinds of things. So, Are there any, well, I know you're you're getting more into the barrels. Are mm -hmm. there any, any styles or anything that you haven't done yet that you want to pursue? Or is that one of the things? Um so we make it an amazing pilsner, mm -hmm. uh, but it also takes us way too long. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I'd really like to be able to make uh, a cost-effective pilsner that we can that that was good, mm -hmm. um, and that we can kind of get out in the larger fashion. But right now, uh, there's a couple things that that we're working on. Um, we just started doing this thing called um, Innovation Brew Day, which one Friday a month, all the brewers uh, decide what beer they want to make, and it's mm. just for fun, and okay, it goes cool. on tap in the tap room. Nice. Uh, yesterday was kind of the kickoff, and we did uh, we did a collaboration beer with Red Hook um, for Seattle Beer Week. So oh, we did cool. a, a brown ale, an American brown. Nice. Um, I think the next one that we've been talking about is, is a wheat beer, and I don't know if it's going to be a Belgian wheat or if it'll be an American wheat or what, but... Yeah, so it's it's like things like that, you know, when you're when you're going full steam ahead, that you got to kind of remember that it is fun and, mm -hmm. and to do things that you really enjoy. Right. Yeah, that sounds like a good way to uh, to keep it fun. And, yeah. So you remember that. Yeah, totally, and and also a good way to so we've we've got guys that mainly run the canning line right. or you know do other things, and it's a good way for them to be able to see what we do and, mm -hmm. and try it try their hand at brewing if mm -hmm. they want to get get you know good at it. Yeah. Cool. So, um, any any yeast or I know you talked a little bit about hops already, but any yeast or hops that uh, that, that you prefer? Um, yeah, actually, <laughs> we did talk about hops, but the, the funny thing is, our powerhouse hop, uh, the one that we have in most of our beers, is Golding, is U.S. Golding, and it's um, it's basically the English. Kent Goldings was the thing that was in most of the British pale ales and and stouts and everything, and then this is the just the American grown version of it. It's a really cool, well balanced hop um, with not a lot of citrus flavor or anything like that. But um, I I really like it because it's kind of an underrated hop. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeast I think is is something that I'm more interested in because uh, it adds quite a bit to your beer um, we use the Belgian Saison yeast which is a pain in the butt to work with but um, I think the payoff is quite a bit better you get a lot more esters and a lot more fullness in the Saisons um, and yeah our, our Czech, Czech lager strain is pretty good too I'm, I'm happy with what we've been able to do with that um, whether it be like a California Common or um, or an, an actual true Pilsner, um, yeah. And then we, because we make, I would say, a little bit more simple beers, mm -hmm. um, uh, maybe a little bit more well balanced beers. Um, we we spend more money on our malt to give kind of a more richness and. Um, because we're we're not able to cover it up with right. hop flavor right. with the Goldings hops mm -hmm. or whatever, but um, yeah, it's all an experiment and it's all fun and um, you know we've been able to kind of play around with other different things and um, I think we're at a point now where we know what we want to be doing and uh, and then when we do experiment, it'll be just for fun. Right. So one thing I. I a lot of times I ask is, um, you know, what makes you 
what do you think makes your beer stand out? And I think you've kind of answered it with everything. You guys, you try to you try to make simple beers. Mm-hmm. It sounds like you're not trying to really make Washington beers. You're trying to make good beer. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I guess that's a I, that's a good way to put it. You know, we want we want Hilliard's beer. I mean, just the, the, the in the same way that we're like going over to Sweden. Now, mm-hmm. um, we want Hilliard's beer to be able to be enjoyed. Not just because it's from Washington, but mm-hmm. just because it's good beer. Right. So, yeah. That's cool. You've done competitions, right? Yeah, we've entered beer in some competitions. Uh, we actually won a gold for the Washington Beer Awards for our Saison uh, last year. Um, and it was funny because we we had, for the first three years, you know, we're entering all these competitions. We're like, oh, man, we're making great beer. We've got to win this stuff. Which is probably what everyone is thinking. <laughs> yeah. But um, and we, honestly, we were we were just done with it. We were going to no. give up completely. And then in the mail, here comes the uh, gold, mm. you know, the gold medal sticker for your <laughs> saison, and we're like, all right, I guess we'll keep going and try it again. Yeah. So we've got a handful of stuff now uh, that we're excited to be sending down to um, the Washington Beer Awards and and some other kind of global awards. So. Cool. Well, that's very cool. So these recipes, uh, whose recipes are they? Um, some of them are Ryan's original recipes, uh, Ryan Hilliard's original recipes. Um, a lot of them, I think the way we write recipes is 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 more of, like, I'll, I'll pencil out what I think is the main thing, and then we'll, we'll actually sit down and, and try beers in the style of what we want. And as a group, kind of like decide to tweak here and there, and um, you know we don't we don't really do like small pilot batches, mm-hmm. which is a little crazy. Um, but we just we I think we spend so much time kind of noodling the recipe that we finally, when we jump in, we're we're comfortable with it. Um, that's not to say that we haven't had to dump batches down the drain. Yes, that was probably my next <laughs> question, based on what you were saying. I was going to ask that. <laughs> Everybody has that yeah. situation. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so um, uh, I think it's, a, it's a, honestly a little bit more of a collaborative effort, uh, surprisingly. Um, I, did, I did let the reins loose uh, one time and let um, Brian and Joey, the other two brewers, have had a recipe that they really wanted to do. And I think I mentioned it before, is that Rauch beer, so okay. it's a yeah. German smoked lager. And I was convinced that it was going to be horrible. <laughs> and, you know, I was like, well, I'll just let them do it. We'll yeah. see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. And uh, it, it went really well. And yeah. actually, we've got a tremendous amount of feedback. So nice. um, it's, it's, it's cool to see that kind of stuff happen, mm-hmm. too, you know. Uh, but, yeah, we definitely work as a team. We're a small team. We're, um, there's only nine full-time employees here. Um, and four of us are on the production side full time um, you know everybody kind of lends a hand here and there wrapping pallets and and uh, helping with the canning line and stuff like that but uh, for the most part it's um, it's a really close knit small team yeah when you when you have a small company you have to be it, it doesn't yeah. work if you don't yeah and we all wear a bunch of different hats mm-hmm. you know we I'll still go out and do sales and um, you know so after I take my boots off for brewing for the day, I'll jump in the car and drop some samples off to the bars that I think would be interested in it. Um, we're doing festivals and uh, uh, yeah, just you just I, I'm working the tap room this afternoon, right. so um, you just kind of have to do do a lot to make it work and and I think it all goes back, you know, to what I said before: is we all really love what we're doing and, and uh, want to see it be successful and want to do things like this and tell people about mm-hmm. what we do and. And I think working in the tap room for me really allows me to get one-on-one feedback. I sometimes I'll kind of fool people and not really tell them that I'm the mm. brewer and mm. and uh, just quiz them about what they think about the beer, you know, <laughs> and try to get some honest feedback from yeah. them and then um, kind of spring it on them that yeah. I'm the brewer. <laughs> oh, really? You didn't like yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> get out of here! No, yeah, no. It's it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, very nice. So what uh, have you? What's been an obstacle that you or a problem that you guys have have come across? Mm. Other than I know the uh, the port slowdown was yeah. obviously a big one. Yeah, that was a big one. Was 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 room an issue 
before? I mean, the space air. Uh, before the new space. Yeah. Um, you know, it wasn't exactly, but it was getting a little tight. Mm-hmm. Like there was there was times where, if we got a, a new load of cans, which is you know twenty four pallets, a semi trailer full basically. We'd have to double stack them, and then to get back to the the last fermenter, you'd have mm. to kind of roll something out of the way and yeah. get in there. But um, we got used to it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's 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 better now. Yeah. Um, so that I think yeah, the port slowdown was huge. Like we we really thought that that was the that was it. Honestly, it was because there was just no end in sight, mm-hmm. and. Uh, we were we were getting really worried. Um, luckily, we came through, and uh, I guess before that, kind of the ongoing struggle is honestly like sales and distribution, and I and it's it's one of the things that I think people that start a brewery don't don't put in the forefront. Um, but now with so many breweries, you know, popping up. You really have to be able to sell your beer, not just mm-hmm. make good beer. Right. Um, so that's something we've struggled with from day one, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, we have an amazing sales manager, Adam, who just, if, if we hadn't had him, like, there's no way we would be where we're at right now. Because no. um, he's just on the, on the street hitting the bricks, like, every day. And, um, yeah, so, and he's taught all of us, I think, a little bit of hustle and um, and then, uh, yeah, but the, the distribution is just difficult and it, the three tier system mm-hmm. is, is a little, little wonky, but, yeah. um, I guess you've got to work with what you got. All right. Awesome. So if you were, uh, if you were not working, what beer would you go for? And I really like Belgian sour beers, honestly. Yeah. Um, I'd... We've got some some of our favorites up here. Okay. Um, the Cantillon, actually, uh, Ryan m- uh, made a trip to Belgium mm. and was able to visit their brewery, and um, they make some excellent beers. Um, as far as local guys, um, Holy Mountain is is a new brewery, mm. and they're doing some really interesting stuff with barrels and stuff, like fermenting in barrels and things like that. Um, which is all the fun stuff that all the production brewers always want to do. So I, I, I like some of the stuff they do. Um, there's one beer that they make called The Goat that's mm-hmm. probably one of my favorites. Um, but, yeah, um, I don't know. I try not to be a beer snob. Sure. You know, because <laughs> yeah. it's like I understand everything that goes into it. Mm-hmm. And uh, and whether or not you like the beer, uh, it's someone's hard work that went into nope. it. Exactly. And... Um, if you don't like it, you don't have to go online and yelp about it or do anything like that. You yeah. just, hey, maybe I won't try that one again. Yeah, Let's try sense. something new. Um, so, I uh, honestly, I like beer. I'll, yeah. I'll drink anything, but, uh, you know, I would say my favorites are some of the sour Belgians. Nice. All right. Well, Todd Garrett from Hilliard's Beer. Yeah. Thanks very much for joining us. Yeah. Yeah. Great to meet you. Same here. Thank you. Thanks to Todd from Hilliard's for joining us today. We'll be right back after a local music break from Glaciers on the Moon.
was Bittersweet by Glaciers on the Moon. You can check them out at glaciersonthemoon.bandcamp.com. If you want to have your music played on Northwest Brew Talk, contact us today. Now, let's try another beer. This is Brookside Pale Lager by Roslyn Brewing Company. 5.4% ABV, and this is a big old bomber. Roslyn Brewing Company has been open since 1990 and is located in the town of Roslyn. Their tap room is open Thursday through Sunday, and they have a beer garden that they open when the weather allows. They are 21 and over and do not serve food, but you are welcome to bring your own. I'm guessing the uh, beer garden is open. <laughs> I hope so. On their website, Roslyn describes their Brookside beer as a pale lager beer made without the darker malts that we use in Roslyn beer. It is hopped primarily with Yakima Hollertau hops and may remind you of a beer you might find at a small Gasthaus in Germany. It is especially popular with people who like full-bodied, lighter beers with mild hopping and is named for the Brookside neighborhood of Roslyn. Yeah, that uh, pretty uh, golden color, amber, amber color, copper, light copper. And... Uh, a little malty, not a lot of hops in it, right? No, nope. but uh, yeah, this is not not bad. It's got a. Uh, it definitely feels like something you could drink uh, drink a couple of. Yeah, it's got a different flavor, more of a more of a malty flavor. Not your typical beer, but no, no, it's definitely uh, something that uh, if you're looking for something different, that would be something you'd want to try. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Northwest Brew Talk. Make sure you tune in next week when we learn about barley with Bridget Mites from WSU. This show is produced and edited by me with engineering help from Michelle Rizzo. If you want to contact us, you can email us at nwbrewtalk at gmail.com or give us a call at 541-595-TALK. That's 541-595-8255. Until next time, I'm Mike Rizzo. And I'm Michelle Rizzo. Stay hopping, my friends.